You were talking about how like sunscreen is is not a concept. People age dramatically faster. If you use North Korean, by the time when they're like twenty three, they get tons of wrinkles. I mean, North Koreans don't live that long, so <laughs> I mean, our life yeah. expectancy is very short, like around fifty, sixty years old right now. And so by the time when they're forty, like we think of them like ancient. <laughs> So really? yeah, yeah. Because of malnutrition, no healthcare, it's really people die quickly. Then like I couldn't believe it. I went to South Korea, seeing people in their forties. I thought they were like twenty something years old. <laughs> How you got like you know wrinkles? Naturally, they don't get it. So that's why I thought like, oh wow, sunscreen is really really important. People don't realize the aging. How quickly you'll age just from sun exposure, which I've seen and happens with so many other people. Did you start incorporating sunscreen when you were like fifteen or sixteen, or was it later on? Because I have so many asins, and people told me because of the make. Of products are causing it. <laughs> they said, "Don't use any, mm -hmm. any chemicals on your face." So I kind of refused to do anything for three years on my skin and just wash it, put nothing on it. But it was really not working on me. My aging didn't okay. go away. Eventually, I, I I just started using the like sunscreen. Yeah, that's good. In North Korea, with you specifically. There really wasn't much exposure to skincare at all. Were you more exposed to it when you were in China? I started applying like something called a cream. So when North Koreans okay. escape and go to South Korea in the beginning, they put in us in a like detention center to make sure that we are not spies. <laughs> it's yeah. so funny. Yeah. I cannot believe it now. So they literally put in this center, and like sometimes they hook you up in a machine that detects lies too. <laughs> So making sure wow. that nobody going to South Korea is a spy, and it's like a long process, yeah. like a two month interrogation and three month of oh retraining. Yeah, because like when North Koreans go to South Korea, we don't even know what bank is. That training center they teach us how to what is subway, how to take a bus, yeah. <laughs> all of the basics. And in there yeah. they. Gave me uh, just one bottle, something called the body uh, lotion, and they gave me for the first time the one bottle of shampoo, and that's when I learned like how to apply like body uh, cream on my face everywhere. Hey, I used to use body wash on my face and body cream on my face, so no worries, no shame at all. <laughs> you know, you used what you had because I had wondered as well. You know, it's such a dramatic culture shock because you're entering a completely different society with where really nothing's the same, and immediately you're expected to be able to. Support yourself, find a job, take care of yourself, set goals, self care, all, all those different types of things, which I'm sure with all of the things that you had to go through to be able to escape, was it like everything such a new concept? Was it a lot to take in? Yeah, so I mean, the biggest shock was when I escaped North Korea, right? As soon as I got into China, I mean, they sold me into slavery. Like they bombed me and, and they raped me. So, Going to South Korea wasn't as shocking <laughs> because they were not like I wasn't uh, raped by people in South Korea, as you said, right? Like、uh, the language barrier, and I was only fifteen years old, and you kind of expect you to take care of yourself, and you know South Koreans also discriminate North Koreans, <laughs> so it was very hard、really? to yeah, it's a huge discrimination. On North Korean defectors, yeah, it took a, a while for me to adjust and be okay with the new situation. And I think that's a, the sad thing about being in that oppression is that it kind of、uh, almost, you know, the first seven years of any human's life is the most important time of their life, right? And I think that's why a lot of defectors even after escape they struggle. The journey doesn't just end, and only not only that. Even if we after escape, like Kim Jong Un is trying to kill me right now, and tons、yeah. of other defectors get, I mean, get assassin threats, and their families get punished. So the battle with defectors and the regime still goes on. Try to be free, and they are trying not to free us. That that's such a good point because that's one of the things that is so incredible and so admiring about your story is is just the bravery involved. And you know, one thing I think a lot of people maybe don't think about a lot is, you know, you've gone through such awful things. I would not blame you at all if you. Left that life, started over, and said, "I never even want to think about that. I want to lead a new, normal life where I don't have to think about that ever again, and I don't have to go through that, you know, re-go through that trauma and think about that life." And I wouldn't blame you because 
you know, you, you deserve a normal life more than anyone. But to continue to share your story, to continue to talk about that, to put yourself on a platform and to be brave enough to be able to do that takes a, a, another level of strength that I don't think a lot of people really understand. And you totally have the right to be able to lead a perfectly normal life away from all of that, but you choose to use your voice to make an impact and to make a difference. That is so incredible. Was it was it hard for you kind of making that choice or did you feel like that was just what you were supposed to do? Oh, thank you for saying that. So my sister chose a life, exactly what you said. She yeah. decided to, I don't ever want to talk about it. I don't ever want to think about it. If there's a way I can erase it, I'm going to erase it. And yeah. she's having a very private life and she's very happy. And a lot of, like you said, like, yeah, 90, 99% of defectors choose that life. Also the danger is that when defectors stands up against the regime, it's not only just their life get threatened, they are putting their like three generations family members like in danger. So it's very hard to <laughs> standing up. I mean, the reason I, why I chose it is, I mean, when you go through something so unreal, like right now in America, there are only 209 North Korean defectors made to America during the 75 years. So there's no mathematic chance explaining <laughs> how I ended up here. So when you yeah. right, like go through so, things so unreal, like you keep asking why me? And I deal with a lot of like guilt, like why I made it. And because so many people died along the journey that I know, my father of course had passed away and, and like you keep asking like why me and you feel so guilty. And I think I found a question, for me at least that, to answer the why is like because I can help free my people. That's why I survived. That's why I got chosen by whatever the power it was <laughs> saved me. I kind of second my life that I had given after crossing the desert. I think of it almost like the plus life <laughs> it was something extra mm -hmm. given to me so you know i don't really get bothered even if you get killed right now like assassinated tomorrow i'll be like feeling like oh i lived thousand years it was more than enough <laughs> yeah it's like i have seen so much it's like i'm fine even if i get killed <laughs> you are amazing that that is such a good perspective and we oftentimes take life for granted and one of the beautiful things about like what you just said and even what you put in your book is just the the way that you see your second chance at, at life and your ability to be able to create your own life and not take it for granted I think is such a, a beautiful thing like you said you have the risks of being a target you know and it's a very real a very real thing it's a real risk and so for you to have that perspective I admire it so much I love that you touched on you know beauty and wanting to feel good and look good being such a natural part of being a human being, you know, and at every level, whether you are in that environment or, or whether you are, you know, in, in the environments you are or I am now, um, how that's something that is, that is, you know, really important. And I think it speaks to one of the things that I love so much about skincare is that it focuses on you just feeling your best and while simultaneously taking care of your health and taking care of yourself and focusing on that importance of, of self-care, which a lot of people don't realize how important that is to make sure that you look good and you feel good. And that's something that should be accessible, whether you have all the money in the world or whether you have absolutely no money at all, no matter where you're located, I think everyone deserves to, to feel good in, in their own skin. And I think people are going to to find ways like you said with with the coins with the flowers um with the chalk people are going to find ways to to feel beautiful and to and to feel good in their own skin yeah so it's like uh, you know when we see the homo erectus or habilis hundreds of years ago we see them using some seashells make uh, like like necklace or even accessories even back then and whenever the regime trying to cure humanity and make a slave, right? I think because yeah. when you try to look good and push you, maybe expressing is like making individual. Every authoritarian, when they try to take control over people, 
they go after beauty. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, literally people get sent to prison in North Korea, have a longer hair, wearing jeans, wearing accessories, wearing makeup. And like, we think like, why do they even bother to put people in prison for that? Well, it's not like mm -hmm. they're creating any revolution. But something yeah. about human psychology, they're trying to deny being a human. And with mm -hmm. the beauty, something so much more than just try to look good, I think. Oh yeah, that's such a good point. It's, it's the human resilience and it's the natural process of self-identity. It, it's so incredible to see that even in that society where individual and human identity is trying to be taken away and there's not supposed to en be any form of self-independence or um, self-choice or self-freedom that people are still, even in small ways, making steps to do that. I remember seeing this really interesting documentary talking about smuggling makeup into North Korea and the relationship with a lot of people in North Korea with, with beauty and how much it would cost and how much people would be willing to do to get access to beauty items and exploring the question of why is that something that's so important when in you know relation to all the other struggles, it seems like such a small little thing. And like you said, it is that self-expression, that self-identity and being able to feel unique and different and good about yourself. That's something that we as humans can can all relate to. And in an interesting and kind of weird way, it's inspiring to see people doing that even in that setting. I'll admit, so I follow you on Instagram and I see that your, your fashion is so good. And I saw like your poses and you're wearing all the fashionable clothing and you look great. And I'm like, yes, get it. You know, as you've explored fashion and skincare, I think it's so awesome. Um, is, is that something that you love to explore now that you feel you're completely able to? It's in a way my like middle finger to Kim Jong-un. Because <laughs> 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 North Korean officials like really follow me on YouTube, Instagram, like really track what I do. And best revenge I can give it to me is like be free and like have a fabulous life. <laughs> you know, when you portray like in the traditional media, North Koreans are portrayed like more like robots, brainwashed, robots mm. marching in the square, wailing, crying when the dear leader dies. It's really dehumanized to see North Koreans on the media, how they're portraying it. But so I'm really trying to make it more like they are like us. They have full potential to be like us. And yeah. people like often think, oh, okay, I'm sure North Koreans fine. They've been oppressed all their life. What do they know anything better? But no, you know when you're oppressed, it's not right. So yeah, I'm like yeah. very uh, enjoying all this freedom. And if I were like dressed up like this in North Korea, I would be in like sent political prison camp. And I'm like sure. we can do this here. So I'm like taking full advantage of that freedom. I love that so much. Like you said, the middle finger up in the air. It's it's great, and it's 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 a testament to you being able to live your own life. So live it to its full potential. Just experience as many things as you can. For me, as someone who's never been through anything like what you've been through, even to me, that's inspiring because it shows me, yeah, you know, like live life to its full potential. Try and experience and explore as many things as you can because we take life for, for granted. I feel like we could talk for so long <laughs> about all of this, but I love what you were sharing about not only your life and, and your story, and thank you for being so open about, you know, what you've been through, but also just talking about, you know, skincare in, in North Korea. I think it's so, so interesting, but like we were talking about something that's so much deeper than just aesthetics in a reflection of the human spirit and in a reflection of you know our desire to be ourselves. Thank you for coming on my channel. This has been so so cool. As I said before you guys her book will be linked in the description box below. Please go read it. It's an incredible account. Also if you want to see different ways that you and I can help people who are in North Korea and people who have you know escaped and people who are trying to start a new life or just make a difference go over to her channel i'll have our video linked in the description box below we're going to be talking about different ways that we can help talking a little bit more about your story and yeah just thank you so much for coming on again i really really appreciate it that was such an honor and real pleasure thank you so much for everything of course of course bye guys bye guys bye